At the Skins Academy, we have had quite a busy January transfer window. We have brought in two players, both of them Brazilian. Haroldo is first up. He is going to probably be our number three striker. We'll come to reasons in a minute. And we've also signed Wagner, who is a 19-year-old Brazilian left-back, formerly of Santos. He was released, or his contract expired. He was available on a free, and I went, he's actually pretty good. So we've brought him in. He's already played a couple of times for us, getting four assists in four games. Pretty good for a left-back. Stefan Inge Paulsen, however, has left the club. This is why Geraldo has been brought in. Inge Paulsen, obviously very, very good for us over the couple of seasons he's been here, but... I kind of just saw the chance to take the money. 1.4 million isn't a huge amount of cash, but he's not been that great in Europe. He's been pretty good in the league. It's money we can spend, and I want to try and bring in some more of the Latvians. Obviously, Ingi Paulsen is Icelandic. He's not Latvian, and, and Geraldo's Brazilian. Not really sure what I was thinking there. We have also sold Frank Dow. This one was a little bit difficult to do. I've done this logically. Nikita Ruggins is our La young Latvian centre-back who wasn't getting games. Riga bid nearly £6 million for Ruggins, and I thought, if he's that good, I should probably play him. I couldn't play him because Frank Dow was already beating him to the first team, so we sold Frankie Dow for £600,000. It's not a lot of money, but it means we can start progressing some of our Latvian youngsters. We have also sold a few other players and loaned a few other players. Most of them you probably would never have heard of anyway. Zaldovkis, Putrasevics and Blanks all leaving the club on permanent deals. Miguel Malo has gone back to his native Uruguay because he's basically playing far too many games for our under-23s and scoring stupid, stupid amounts of goals. If we actually have a look, uh, he, he scores hat-tricks fairly regularly. That match there, he scored two hat-tricks. And just in case you're interested, this is how the Latvian High League looks. Uh, yes, we are top. We haven't lost a game now for two full calendar years in the league. We've got 65 points and only conceded seven goals. Let's play Krasnodar in the Europa Conference League. I'm not particularly confident about this match. There you can see our starting 11 is going to be the 4-2-4. Ruggins is going to be a central defender. Neymar is on the left-hand side up front. We do have... I can't even remember his name now. Is Saarinen's? I think it's Saarinen's playing alongside Oleg Skorks. So the home leg is first, which means we really do need to try and find ourselves a goal and not concede. That's what we're after here. Don't concede, I guess, is probably the bigger target. 20 minutes and the first highlight of the game is here and we do have the ball. Wagner with this, playing his first ever Europa League game. Nene B, back to Wagner. The Brazilian and the Ivorian pass in between the pair of them. Is he going to go long? Wagner back to Nene B. What? I mean, are you two just wanting to pass between the pair of you? He's gone long eventually. Ivar Saarinen's on the left-hand side. Gorks is in the middle. Can he get his crossway? Back to Neymar. Back to Saarinen's. Outside the area is Maxim Baranovs. And the youngster's effort just goes wide of the goalkeeper's post. First highlight on goal goes to us. But unfortunately, does not find its way into the bottom corner. A second highlight now, though. Fedor Shalov's throw. Mohamed El Yanusi loses out. And Wagner can clear that ball upfield. Kasp Kaspers? Oleg Skorks, sorry, that's his name. He's managed to muscle off two players. He's still got the ball. Oleg Skorks, what a finish that is. The strength of the Oleg Skorks there to put that ball into the back net. To fight off three Krasnodar players, we are 1-0 up in Latvia against the Russian side. That's a huge goal. Ten minutes left of the first half, and Taihi's just had the ball thrown straight at him from a Krasnodar player. Saarinen's is going to run through the middle. He's got Gorks in front of him. Saarinen's is going to go all the way. Neymar's off to his left. He's gone for goal himself. Tries to put it in the bottom corner. Wasn't very close, but it was a good idea. Neymar with a corner for us. Five minutes left. Nene B's there. Heads just over the bar. Nene B has so many chances, but never seems to score them. Still not quite at half time. The goalkeeper with a free kick off towards the right-hand side. The boss heads it down for Taihi, though. He's going to run into the penalty area. Is Taihi going to make it two? He really should have made it two. It is going to be 1-0 to the Skins at Football Academy at half time. We should be two or three nil up. We have had so many good chances here. Straight into the second half. Looking at it, Saarinen is struggling a little bit, but luckily for us, Oleg's Gorks is playing absolutely amazing. We are going to be bringing Saarinen off. Maybe Haroldo if I've put him on the bench, which I probably haven't. The second half has been fairly dull. Saarinen is going to come off. Haroldo is the man to come on. I know Stipe Nikes is actually Latvian, but I want to give Haroldo some games as well. We're going to also take off Taihi for Stipe Nikes. Sure, you can, can you play on the right wing? I mean, you're, you really should be playing on the left, but we'll put you on the right. That's fine. This could be the ideal result. This genuinely, a 1-0 victory against Krasnodar at home could be more, ideally should be more. 
But realistically, we're going to get ourselves the victory. We're going to get ourselves those coefficient points as well. Wagner, I've just seen, is on an 8.2. He's been an absolutely a magical signing since we brought him in. A late, late chance for Krasnodar from this free kick. Is it Ben Davies? It's Ben Davies. He's just curled that one into the top corner. Of course, it's his first goal of the season. It's 1-1, and that's an away goal. Literally no highlights in the second half, apart from one free kick. That was it. That was it. A 1-1 draw in the end. We should have won. We really should have won that game. I'm going to say, I'm, am I not happy? No, you're unlucky. And then I'm going to say to some players, in particular you guys, because I'm guessing you guys are the ones who were missing the chances, not happy with your performance. Straight into match number two then, over in Russia. And we now need to score a goal. Because of that late Ben Davies free kick, we now need to score ourselves a goal. That is our starting 11. You can see Abdul Samad is getting a start today. Basically, that is because of suspensions in the middle of the pitch. It's going to be a very, very tough game. But I'm hoping we're good enough to get a goal. It's an early chance. Malcolm Yans holds on to that. Was that the highlight? I feel like it wasn't. Although, knowing this game, sometimes that might be. It's gone long towards Gorks. Heads it down to Stipe Nikes. Doesn't manage to get there, though. And Ben Davies can smash that upfield. Nikita Ruggins to Wagner, who did miss out on the league game in between the two matches, which is probably for the best because he's absolutely knackered. We've lost the ball again and it's gone all the way back to Juris Melkamians with his lovely moustache. I don't know whether you've spotted that. He, for some reason, has grown a moustache. We're in February. Neymar runs with the ball very slowly because that's all he can do now. Finds Oleg's Gorks, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, and Gorks has missed that somehow. How has that not found its way in? We should have scored over these two ties already, Four goals, maybe? Krasnodar with a corner. It's going to be El Yanusi to take it. The former Southampton man. It's found Haidara, who I assume is the former Newcastle man, but heads over the bar. He's not the former Newcastle man. He's very good, though. Vilhena with the ball. It's counter almost gets there ahead of Haidara. Shalov tries to find the ball in. And Melky Mounds with a wonderful save. I think that was the right back who had the shot. It's going to be a corner. It's probably going to be Moyel Yanusi going over to take it. It is the Norwegian right-footed towards the back post. It's De Ketelere and it is cleared, I think. Or was that De Ketelere's header who cleared it himself? Throw for Wagner to take it. Stipe Nikes playing as a striker today. Kauna crosses that ball in. Taihi's there at the back. And Taihi's headed effort goes just wide once again. We are getting close. We're not having a lot of chances, but the chances we're having seem to be pretty good. It is still nil-nil, so if it stays this way, we will be going out of the competition. Abdul Samed's just been sent off for a straight red card. He very rarely plays, and Abdul Samed's gone and done that. Why have you... Game. So that's us over, isn't it? That's us done for. Right, we're going to have to do this. Stipe Nikes is going to get substituted for Caesar. We then need to make sure that you're not changing with anybody, because you will do that. Um, so make sure you're also not changing, you're not changing... Okay, let's... We're going for a... I mean, that's probably ruined it, hasn't it? That has probably ruined it. Seesaw's gone immediately up front as well. I knew that was going to happen, and for some reason he still did it. Why? Why does it do this game? That way round. There we go. We do have a highlight with Krasnodar on the ball. We are, what, 40 seconds away from half-time. El Yanusi on the right-hand side, forward to Shalov. He's got some company. I think that's counter with him. El Yanusi gets this once again, runs into some space, flicks it to Shalov, plays it back to Vilhena. Now Shalov again, across to Haidara, through ball to El Yanusi, and Moy El Yanusi has made it 1-0 to Krasnodar. And that, because of that Abdul Samad red card, is probably the end of our Europe. Half-time, um, I'm going to say that it wasn't good enough. Look, Looking at the numbers, so many people were just... Not doing so well. So you weren't right. I'm gonna gonna try the old cheating tactic, which is basically saying to everyone you were awful, and then individually going, but not you. Five minutes into the second half, we can still get something from this. But if Krasnodar score another one, it is pretty much game over because we then need to score two more goals. El Yanusi with this on the right hand side into the penalty area. Wagner sticks a leg out, does get the ball crossed in anyway. Fedor Shalov is there, heads over the bar. It's going to be a goal kick. Looking at the match stats, it's been fairly even. In fact, we've had more possession and the same amount of shots. Sergei's counter with a great slide tackle. Ruggins to Nene B. Right hand side is Bossard. He's gone long instead towards Gorks. The lone striker needs some support up there. Counter. In the middle, off towards Taihi on the right-hand side, controls it well. We need Neymar in the box, and Taihi's gone it alone, and he's hit it just wide again. Right, Neymar's legs aren't working today. He's on a 6.2. We're going to bring on Alex Arthur, the Ghanaian winger. We've got one more change. I don't really want to do anything at the moment. 
We're going to leave it as is. We're still in this game. As things stand, we are still in this game. I'm going to give them a... What do we... Fire them up. Is that going to work? Final 15 minutes. Krasnodar coming forward with this. Steal it off. Counter sticks a leg out and does manage to do so. Gorks has no support. It's found its way to Taihi. Gorks needs to run into that space. Taihi's going to use his pace off towards the right-hand side. Needs someone in the middle. Gorks is that man. And Oleg's Gorks has tucked it away, but he was offside. We are getting some VAR. And uh, it is a clear offside. It is no goal. Why? Gorks, learn, learn your surroundings, man. I knew you were offside before. Like, you're so far offside. It's ridiculous. 10 minutes to go, and we need just anything now. We need something. Let's give them, I don't know, what do we say? Encourage. Let's give them an encourage. Bossards, nick that ball away. Final five minutes of the game. Lukemi with it on the left-hand side for Krasnodar. Forward to Fedor Shalov. We need to steal this, and I get the impression Krasnodar are going to score any second now. Hydara forward to Shalov. This man's name plays it back to Hydara once again. They're passing it around, making us look absolutely silly at the moment. Hydara with loads and loads of space. Little flick. Steal it. Stick a leg out counter. What is This is the most passing we've ever seen, and we've still managed to steal the ball. Gorks, he needs some runners. Alex Arthur's behind him. Gorks is going off towards the left-hand side. He's going to shoot himself. Of course he does. Use your brain, Gorks. You have been absolutely shocking this match. You're on a 6.3. You probably could have scored a hat-trick if you actually paid attention to what was going on. Krasnodar again coming forward with the ball. Plays it back. Now right-hand side is the fullback who had a very good chance in the first half. To share. Back to the fullback. Now this man. Malionovsky. Maybe. Fedor Shalov goes for goal into the bottom corner. And it's game over. And all they've done is had two shots. We had so many chances and ruined so many chances. And Krasnodar are going to win based on, on what? Because our strikers can't finish. That is such an unfair result. Getting sent off. Abdul Samad ruined that for us. If we had a 11 men for the whole game, then that would have been fine. Right, point our fingers. It's unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Whereas Abdul Samed, I'm going to throw the water bottle at you because you were the reason. I tried to sell him, by the way, in January because he's not going to become Latvian, which is one of the reasons why I was keeping him around. And he's not as good as he used to be. And I think he's just confirmed my suspicions. Abdul Samed, buddy, you want to start more games, yeah? You want to start more games. You've played 14 times this season, which is actually quite a lot of games. And you're moaning that you want to start more, and then that's what you do. You do a 6.2 rating. Admittedly, you've not played for a long time, and the last time you played, you did get a 7.6. A but, I mean, I want to sell him. I really do want to get rid of him. Well, I guess as the season is effectively over, we're going to have a quick look at where we are going to finish when it comes to coefficient places. I don't think we're going to be moving up. So 21st is where we currently are. We're going to a 23.125. What does that actually mean? We've got to click that one there. We're staying in exactly the same place because Romania have climbed up and Norway have dropped down. So that's basically the only changes. It's still an improvement, isn't it? It's still an improvement on the 2.875. It's only a 4.0. It is our worst European performance for quite a while. That's not good. Thank you very much for watching this episode. The next episode will be the final one of season eight. I don't know who we're going to be playing. It's probably only going to be one match unless we're in both Winter Cup and normal FA Cup finals. So yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching this one. Like, subscribe, all the fun, fancy YouTube -y stuff, and I'll be back next time.